Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty, at the Haggerty 10 on the Twitter handle. And as you can see, once again, I'm joined by the wonderful Kevin McKenna, who I just made laugh prior to his coming on, because I said we'd be talking cobblers about the leather belts, the Marjorie Prips and the fuzzy felts, and he, he let out a big laugh. So yes, he's enjoying the old cockney rhyming slang there, but there you have it. So how are we doing on this Tuesday morning? Are we all well? 17th of October. I'll just get bit, the bar, banners up. On you go, Kev. Sorry, on you go. Bit chilly, bit chilly. Ah, the temperature's dropping big time, Kevin. Yes, indeed. But as you can see from the top of the pictures there, Celtic Way Morning Briefing has a new sponsor, and they are MPH Group, and they deal in plumbing, heating, kitchens, and bathrooms. And we are proud to be sponsored by uh, MPH Group. The Morning Briefing is brought to you by MPH Group, who are Scotland's award-winning family-run all-trade specialist covering all of mainland Scotland. And every service that you opt for automatically enters you into MPH's incredible holiday giveaway. And you could win a seven-night stay at the luxurious five-star Moon Palace Resort in Cancun, Mexico. And if you tune into the description of the briefing, you will see all the links to everything that they do, all the social media links and your contact numbers and all that, and you can have a look at them. So we say thank you to MPH Group for their sponsorship of the Celtic Way Morning Briefing. Now, Kevin, Celtic, and a man who's making the headlines again last night, Mikey Johnston, mm. had, had a wonderful game against Gibraltar, scored a goal, Republic of Ireland won 4 nothing. And we were talking... Uh, off air just prior to coming on, we seem, we seem to have this kind of conversation about Mikey Johnson at kind of irregular intervals, don't we? We know there's a player there, he's been plagued by injuries, hasn't he? And uh, we always seem to sort of stop and say, Is this it? Can Mikey Johnson, does he have a future at Celtic? Can he, can he uh, get that consistent run of games? Can he make an impact? And will he be the player that we all hopes there? Because I looked at I looked at his age, he's still only 24, Kevin, but he seems to have been around for a, a long, long time. And I think because he's a homegrown player, we all want him to do well, don't we? Yeah. We're, we're willing yeah. it to happen, aren't we? Yeah. Um, it's just that when we all first saw him, we realised he had a lot of skill. He's one of ours. Uh, I can't remember, apart from James Forrest, the last time we had, you know, a, a homegrown forward. I know he's not an out-and-out out forward, but, and he, you know, he's just got that skill set and we, that, that we like. And as you said, he's he's been plagued by injuries. <sighs> yeah, if he wasn't Scottish, we wouldn't be, we, we wouldn't really be having this conversation would be well it's just not meant to happen but but we want it to happen for him uh he's he's a local he's a local lad um he seems to be from what i've heard he seems to be a, a a good guy good lad and his boss his boss at the republic of ireland recognizes his talent too um didn't you tell me that after last night's game, he was saying, you know, he's just he's too good to be sitting yeah. on the bench. Yeah, we, we kind of know that, but <laughs> I mean, how many times yeah. is, you know, I'd, I'd love him, I, you know, I really would, I'd love him to, to come back to us. As you said, he's still only 24. I'd love him to be dropped into a game and to go on a, you know, to do really well and and go on a run of games. But, but you know that over the last 10 years, getting into the Celtic first team is far more difficult now than it was even five, 10 years ago. Because, because now we are operating, and I think I said this last year, we're operating with um, a squad where every, every position is covered. Yeah. And sometimes covered to, you know, times three, times four. It's it's difficult. It's, it's never been more difficult to get into the Celtic first team than it has been for the last three or four years. 
Yeah. So there's that to contend with as well. Stephen Kenny said last night, this is what he said after the game, you know I love wingers, I absolutely adore wing play, that's his fourth cap, but he needs to play matches, he's too good not to be playing football. Mm. Now, he had a decent loan spell at Vittorio Gomares, I think that was maybe, you know, in terms of hyperbole, it was overhyped, uh, you know, what he actually did with Victoria Gomares. I've been on this programme before, and I've kind of nailed my colours to the mass with Mikey Johnson. My problem with Mikey Johnson is, one, he's never fit enough to have a consistent run of games, and I think he, he lacks an end product. I think his decision-making in the final third uh, leaves a lot to be desired, and I've said that I think he would be best served going elsewhere. But I look at the likes of Liam Scales, who's resurrected his Celtic career and now is turning out for Republic of Ireland as well, and every time Mikey Johnson plays for Republic of Ireland, people rave about him. She given also said he loves watching him play. So I know they're, they're kind of seeing the best of Mikey Johnson because he's played more for the Republic of Ireland recently than he has for Celtic. And so you say to yourself, is he worth one final throw of the dice? Would Brendan Rodgers, given that, bearing in mind Brendan Rodgers is the manager that brought him into the first team fold uh, in the first place? So... That's why we're talking about this, and it seems to be a recurring team with Mikey Johnson because his career's been stop start at Celtic, hasn't it? And as he kind of, I'm just sort of wondering, as he kind of enter the last chance because you don't want to write anybody off because Liam Scales is a perfect example of that. Liam Scales has been written off; he was sixth or seventh or even eighth in the pecking order of centre halves. Mm. Got his chance through various injuries to players. And he's, he's now a Republic of Ireland international. And him and Cameron Carter-Vickers, people are saying that's the central defensive pairing moving forward for Celtic. So you don't want to knee-jerk things and you don't want to go overboard. But uh, he has had his problems with injuries, hasn't he, Kevin? And, you know, we just... I, I'm, the, I'm of the opinion now, <laughs> will the real Mikey Johnson please stand up? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So see where it goes from there. But it's up to the manager, isn't it? The sentimentalist in me <laughs> wants him wants him to have another another Practice. throw of the dice. Um ironically, despite despite what I've just said, um there is there's uh there's an opportunity <clears throat> for him because the players we have um as wingers, who you've got uh, there's 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 room that there isn't an established uh there isn't a, an established player who's made that position his own at the moment in the yeah. Celtic first team. Apart from anything else, if if um you know I I'm a, a Mikey Johnson playing well, given his skill set, electrifying the fans with his, his skills, scoring some goals. It's worth a lot of money, as well. I mean, how much would um, how much would we be paying for somebody like that? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, true. So, yeah, he, and again, as as you said, his age. Let's get let's let's give him. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I've just had a wee downer on him ever since he missed that sitter at Hamden. Oh God! When, Celt- when Celtic ringer. were put, yeah, if when he, Celtic were put through the ringer, and you know, if he scored that nothing, goal, yeah, I mean, that street. was I had like half an hour of the most agonising, the most oh. agonising half an hour or so of a football match ever. Watching us trying to hang on with ten men against Rangers in that League Cup final. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, it was... I mean, the joy was unconfined at the end, but I really could have done without that half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I think we all could have done. And, and and again, that was where I go back to that decision-making. You know, a, a confidence player just runs in and sticks out in the net. It was Edward that passed it through to him, wasn't it? And had the roles been reversed, it would have been in the net. With Edward running oh, through, yeah. you, you would know. And I think to myself, you know, when you're running through like that guy, you see guys like that doing that training all the time. You, you should be learning. And so I, you know, I didn't form any kind of base in judgment. That was just something else. It was another layer for me to say, 
you know, he might not cut it as a Celtic player. Lots of people disagreed with me at the time. I still feel like that, but I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate and thinking, if he can turn it on for Ireland, and I'm and I am allowing for the nature of the opposition last night, but if he can turn it on for Ireland and lots of people are enjoying him playing for Ireland, then is it worth another, as I say, last whirl at Celtic? And, and Rodgers is a kind of guy who could maybe get a tune out of him, isn't he, Kevin? That's my yeah. that thinking yeah. behind that. Yeah. <laughs> on on the downside, you're talking about the development of his game. And I suppose you have to say that he hasn't really had any of that simply because he's not been working in and around the first team and so hasn't had the benefit yeah. of Angie's coaching um, and now uh, Brendan's coaching. I mean, you look at somebody like, I, I don't know, like Anthony Ralston, whom we thought was out the door a few seasons ago. Yep. And Ange Postacoglu worked with him. Yeah. Um, okay. Big Tony was prepared to work, and I know that that impressed um, Ange because he'll, he'll, first and foremost, he likes to see a professional, industrious attitude by players um, to their game, to their profession. But you could actually see the improvement. You could see areas, you know, Big Tony was doing things that we didn't think he was capable of. Yep. And that was because he had a world class coach who was coaching him. And you know, we, we, we saw that with other players too. And we know that Brendan Rodgers can bring out the best in a player. And that's the thing with um, with uh, with Mikey, that he's lost out. It's not just game time he's lost out on. It's that um, exposure to that, that coaching to develop weaker parts of his game. So... Yeah. Brendan Rodgers will be thinking that as well. You know, he, he knows as well as we do. As, as you said, he brought him into the team, what he can do, what his natural ability is. But you would expect a 24-year-old having been in and around the club for, for, for as long as he has to have, by 24, ironed out, you know, developed the weak part, parts of his game, yeah. strengthened the good parts of his game, become more tactically aware, um, just become more experienced. Yeah, and he's he's, he's missed Sweet. out on that. Yeah, but now, but that all said, sentimentally, <laughs> and and because we know he's got the skill, um, yeah. I'd give him. I'd 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 love to see. I'd, I mean, I'd just love to see him in the team. If there was a way that it could be done. Yeah, I know. Lots. There's, I know there's no sentiment in football these days. Sure. Lots of comments coming in, so I'll take a few of them, Kevin. Emo. Uh, Mark, he's saying Mikey's one of the chosen eight homegrown players, so his future at the club is secure in that respect until somebody better house him. We all know there's a player in him. It's up to him to show it, which is kind of what you've been saying, eh? Jerry or Rossi thought Mikey played all right last night and scales as well. That He's obviously watched the Republic of Ireland game. Michael Ross, a bit more harsh. He's had a million chances and failed. He is injury prone. And it's a myth he played Brown in Portugal. Sadly, his time was up at Celtic. I'm erring towards that as well, Michael, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't couch it in those harsh terms. Uh, and he says, by the way, I'd love to be proven wrong. I built it yourself, Kevin. That's that 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 sentimentality streak that uh, and Plunge McNugget coming in saying morning. Dudes, dudes and dudesses. If Brendan gives Mike a chance, it'll be his last chance. He's not 18 anymore. Yep, that's what we're saying as well. Sorry, Mikey, says Danny Boy, but if you want a successful career, it's time to leave. Good luck. Michael Duffin agreeing with us in the sense that he's a baller. He can play. He's got some. He's got skill set. Dave CFC, not because he scored against Gibraltar, get a grip. Well, we did say it was against Gibraltar, but we're talking about other people watching him. He's played more for Republic of Ireland than he has for Celtic, and they're raving about him over there. So just asking, is it too late for him? Has he missed that chance? Dennis Jameson, too much time in the treatment table. He agrees with me. Not many people do that, Kevin, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis, for that. Hazel Finn, would like to see Michael, Mikey Johnson given a chance. His problem is staying injury-free. That's very, very true. And <laughs> Pete McGee, there he is. Pete McGee, how are you? Um, Mikey Johnson's more than last chances and Sinatra's had farewell tours. 
I don't know how many farewell tours Sinatra had, but I did go and see him at Ibrox. There you go. That was marvellous. Uh, Scales would have been an Aberdeen player if injuries did hit. We were talking about Scales, that kind of turn in fortune, a sliding doors moment with uh, Liam Scales and the Cinderella story. That's become a wrote about that yesterday. Mikey has the odd good game, but he's not going to be a Celtic player. Chill Pill, morning guys, and he's often seen a fit. Michael, Mikey Johnson would help the goals tally. You're on board with that, Kevin, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And there, and he would, you know, he would be, be a, a saleable asset then as well. Mikey's only good at getting injured, says Chill Pill. Lots of guys being a bit harsh on him as well. Uh, Plunge McNugget saying Yang's been terrible, so this could be Mikey's chance to get in instead of Yang. And Dennis James saying he's got to be fit, he's got to stay fit if he's going to even try to break into the team. Yeah, I mean, we're aware that that's a prerequisite that he has to stay fit. Um, uh, I'm always on about that. But, you know, it's this is the manager that gave him his first team chance. So I think, in terms of Kevin talking about sentimentality, he might give him another shot. That was all I was alluding to, you know. It will come out in the wash, won't it, Kevin? Yeah, I take most most of the most of those commenting are saying what, what we all know that yeah he's injury prone. But let's look at being injury prone. It's not it's that's nobody's fault. It's not yeah Mikey uh, Johnson's I, fault. It's it's a sad fact of life. We we've known very gifted players for, for us and other clubs who've just never made it because of circumstances out with their control, which is their, their injuries. You're hoping too that with, I think over the last few years, we've heard that Celtic's medical science unit has grown and become more sophisticated. And we, we, we kind of take that on trust because what do we know? Um, yeah. So you assume that's the case if you're investing in this, this sort of, you know, paying the sort of wages, investing in the sort of players we get, you have to have that. So I'm 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 assuming that they know what the issues are with Mikey, that they know why, or at least part of the reason why um this injury recurs. And yeah, you know, you're just you're just hoping that a key will be found. To it. I mean, I mean, obviously he's he's regained a certain amount of fitness if he's starting for the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, now, I know, I know, I know. Ireland haven't had a great run recently, um, but it's still the Republic of Ireland. That you know, there's still a, a you know a kind of first division, first mm -hmm. tier international team. You know, you don't get a start there uh just because you know you've got an irish sound and surname or because <laughs> you know you you've plumped to play for them you still have to do a bit of work and be rated yeah. to get a starting berth whether whether it's against gibraltar luxembourg or, or germany so so that gives me hope that he's he's um if, you know he's physically fit enough to play in uh, a competitive international match for a, a, a team like the Republic of Ireland. Yeah. And so, if he's fit enough to play in that stage, then he's obviously fit enough to play for Celtic. And now it's mm. up to him to impress the manager. Seamus Gallagher comes in and says, Mike Johnson's been very unlucky with injuries he had, but hopefully he's getting over them and back to his best. The young man's a good player in his opinion. I think we all think there's a player there. Uh, K Max, so I quite like this. From what little I've seen of him, he's a talented player with good dribbling skills, but absolutely no clue that there are 10 other guys on the pitch with them. Again, going back to my original point about decision-making and James Floyd saying he can't cheat Tony, i.e. Mikey Johnson resurrecting. It's a, again, that, that decision-making, that's what I was I probably referring to when I was saying, you know, because of his injuries and because yeah. of his loan spells, he's not been exposed to yep. that coaching that you would imagine Ange Postecoglou or Brendan Rodgers would have said, you, Mikey, you need to work on your decision making. Here's yep. what you do. Let's we're going to we're going to work on this um in training. We're going to work on it with your fellow, you know, your colleagues. 
with the coaches here, that's what happens. That's what we expect would happen to any player with ability that the good coach recognises the weaknesses, works on them. Mikey hasn't had that. Yeah, correct. And Edward Wye was, there's more chance of an asteroid hitting Earth than Tony St. Doss when I make it. <laughs> you know, there are some players that you prefer to others, and I guess Mikey Johnson's a player that, yeah, I, I have my, I have a strong opinion about, but I'm not writing them off completely. But I'm trying, I'm trying to think in our history of a Celtic player who's. I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about um, scales because we talked to him last week. But just going back, if there was a player who was unlucky with injuries or who'd been written off and um, come back at around about the same stage that Mikey's at now and made a contribution. Uh, off, off the top of my head, I'm like you. I'm struggling to think of one, but I'm sure the minute we come off the briefing, you'll go, oh, such and Jim, such. Jim Craig, Jim Craig in the Lisbon Lions wasn't really kind of taken seriously at first because he was a dental student and deemed to be a wee bit posh. Um, <laughs> there you go. Jim Brogan. Yeah. yeah. Jim Brogan, yeah. Guys like that, that's going, going back a wee bit, isn't uh, it? Yeah, but isn't it? People, uh, yeah. yeah. He's old Finn. Mikey Johnson has his best chance working with a manager at Brendan Rogers. He's a manager that will know how to help him. With that's well. Scott Dougal, maybe I'll move away for Mikey Johnson will be best for him. I've advocated that in the past. I'm just bringing this up because obviously he's played more for Republic of Ireland. The more people that see him play for Republic of Ireland, they seem to rave about him. And Seamus Gallagher says, I hope MG proves all the doubt are wrong. Tony, and he does great for us. It's, it's as if I've uh, I don't want to do well. I do want to see Mikey Johnson doing well because I get frustrated because I think there's a player there. And as I say, when I saw him run through at Hamden, I just expected that to land lovely in the net and breathe easily. 2 0, Celtic were under a cosh, and it didn't. And I was really annoyed. And I thought a talented player like that should be able to go one and one and score. And that, didn't. That, and that was the that was a Sean Maloney. Taking that free kick against yeah. the cultural moment, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a friend called Pat who just <laughs> who, who can never forget that about no matter what else Sean Maloney did for Celtic, they did a lot. Pat <laughs> can never forgive him for <laughs> skying that free kick. Yeah, he didn't score that free kick against Porto in the last minute. You know, he didn't hit it Beckham like into the top corner at Old Trafford against Greece to qualify England for the World Cup. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, something else that caught my eye, Kevin, uh, thanks for the comments about Mikey John Skies, everybody taking part. It's clearly, it's one of those uh, subjects that you know, kind of polarises opinion. Uh, unlike Anthony Ralston, if Mikey Johnson does resurrect his Celtic career, I'll be the first to come on this broadcast channel and say, well done, Mikey Johnson. I apologise for the, the negativity towards you and, for t- and say well done and congratulations for turning it around. But you know, time will tell on that one. I hope he does. I, I hope he does. I, I uh, want him to make people, a person like me, eat my words. That's the whole point, isn't it? I should, I should, um, in the interest of of probity, I should declare an interest whenever I mention um, Anthony Ralston. <laughs> Not that I often do because my my brother is his agent. So, I, you know, I should declare ah, that interest. Okay, um, fair enough. Which is why I try not to mention them all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you for that, Kevin. I still, go, that. I still, I still go, don't get any tickets for cup finals, right enough. Uh, that's no use, is it? Well, no. What's the that's... problem? What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> now, something else that caught my eye, Kevin, yesterday was uh, Martin O'Neill was asked his thoughts about, you know, Philip Clement. He was on Talk Sport, and obviously. Rangers have a new manager, Philippe Clement, well, no, uh, Belgian, he's come into the Rangers. And Martin O'Neill famously said that quote, remember when he came in at Celtic, that Rangers were the benchmark. Brilliant quote. That was just so, so subtly underplayed. Rangers are the benchmark. We'll see what happens type thing. But he caught it spot on. And uh, he was asked his thoughts about Clement. And this is what he said about any manager getting to manage Celtic or Rangers, what they have to do. Martin O'Neill said in Talksport, just win some football matches. 
You have to overtake Celtic. It's as simple as that. That's what you have to do. You need to do that relatively quickly. That's the point. None of this, please don't come in and say you have a three-year plan or I want to see the youth players developed, which I think you might be able to do. But no, you have to win and you have to win immediately. I guess that's stellar and sound advice from a man who was in that movie back in 2000, 2001 when Rangers had won the league by something like 25 points the season before, didn't they? Oh. And uh, he turned that around and turned it around very quickly. His first uh, first derby match was that unforgettable demolition derby 6-2 and it, and it went from there, Kevin. But I guess, uh, you know, Martin's been there and seen it and done it and there, there is a, now a, a new challenge coming from uh, Rangers, Ibrooks with Philip Clement in the saddle. Are you worried? <laughs> so I guess would be the, the the big question there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. I mean, not sure. <laughs> look, <laughs> and you know, I know we we you know we should. I, people have said to me previously whenever I've mentioned Rangers or included them in a column for the Celtic way. Why are you doing that? Celtic, but the fact is, whether we like it or not, um, Rangers are are basically, you know, part of our part of how we define ourselves includes how they do. They will be our biggest challengers. But no, I have to say, and of course, you know, you say this knowing that you can you you can be proven wrong, that in any any manager coming in to manage Rangers at the moment is facing existential challenges out quite quite out with having to beat us. I can see where, where Martin O'Neill's coming from and I know what he's trying to do. One one of the problems with managing coming in to manage Celtic or Rangers at any time is that so in one hand it looks attractive because because you're going to be you're going to automatically be challenging. You, you're automatically one of the only two favourites for the title. The problem with that, though, is that there's only that thing that you have to achieve um, is, is finishing ahead of the other half of the, the big yeah. two. And coming into Rangers at the moment, that looks quite onerous. You're coming in and at the end of three years, if no, no, no matter how much he might improve that team, at the end of three years, if, if Rangers continue to be second to Celtic, then he'll be off. Yeah. And, you know, being as charitable as possible and, and allowing for, for all sorts of things. If, Brent, if Brendan Rodgers is here for the next three years, and I think he will be. He, he said he will be. I think he will be. And if we are managed as astutely financially as we have been, and our scouting operation, our selection, our recruitment process works as well as it has been for the last three years, then Celtic will be Celtic will be champions this season, next season, and the following season. Yeah. Now, now what? You know, there, there are certain there are certain imponderables and variables there. One is um, you can have serious injuries to one or two key players. Um, the new Rangers manager has got a good pedigree. I know he was sacked by Monaco, but you don't get asked to manage Monaco if you've not got something in the first place. And he might just be, you know, he, he could be a very, very gifted coach and he could work wonders. But you have to, you know, you have to say that on the evidence of the last three seasons and as long as Celtic maintain their stability, uh, I don't see Rangers catching us. And that's a big problem for any managers coming into Rangers because, again, no matter how much improves the team, um, if, if he hasn't overtaken Celtic within the next three years, then then he won't be there. Yeah, and I've written about it. It's the comments. Uh, it's in the comment section, and it's why Rogers won't fear the Rangers new manager. 
So you can have a wee read at that, guys, and on the website today, uh, you can see that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm in agreement with that because I think it will take a lot of transfer windows for Rangers to get up to speed. And some of those transfer windows would have to be flawless, wouldn't they? I've said that in the piece. And also that's assuming that Celtic are going to stand still and they're not. And if Celtic sense a challenge from Rangers, having had maybe a couple of successful transfer windows, then as you say, Celtic's model's there. Our scouting department, they I always talk about the putting on the afterburners, you know, jumping that jumping into I hyperspace as you do in Star Wars when they Han Solo hits the button and the Millennium Falcon and they just shoot away. And I think if Rangers start to show any kind of evidence of that under Clermont and Celtic would do that, they would they would spend some money, wouldn't they? And I think they also have to keep spending money to catch up. I think I mean, also Celtic, well, I certainly hope that Celtic um still have horrible memories from what happened during the COVID season. Yeah. And I know, I know. When you're talking to when we're talking to our Rangers friends, we like winding them up when they talk about stopping mm-hmm. the game. And and we say, yeah, but it wasn't really a, a wasn't a proper season. It's just one of those things. But it was. <laughs> and I'm still I'm still sick about it. And I don't know what happened there, but we we were we were complacent. We we assumed too much. We underestimated um Stephen Gerrard perhaps. So I'm I'm hoping that nothing, nothing will be left to chance. Nothing will be assumed about uh about Rangers. Um that we won't be complacent again because that still hurts that season and I hope it still hurts in the Celtic boardroom. Yeah. Yeah and I'm and I'm confident that whilst Brendan Rogers is there that, that won't happen. And uh that's why I'm I was delighted to see him back uh, because he contributes a, a hell of a lot more than people actually give him credit for. you know. And I, and I like you, I remember saying at the time that in years to come, there'll be university papers, theses and books written, the men who sold the 10, won't there? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> yes. We'll end up doing it ourselves at one point, Kevin. We'll I mean, there's, there's, there's things that we've alluded to and we can't really go into too yeah. much detail. There's stuff that you know was going on behind the scenes and there's stuff that I know. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm a big defender of Neil Lennon and I know that there were things going on behind the scenes that were miles out with his control and he was asked to front it up and make the best of it but yeah let's just leave it there <laughs> we've, we've, moved, we've moved on from that Kim. We're in a no good... we haven't we haven't <laughs> we're in a good place we're in a good place uh, but yeah and I'm like you you respect I think one of the commenters I'll flick it up uh, he said you respect the opposition but you never feel them there as Des Harkin Fear of the opposition is never an option. You respect them at times, but you never feel yeah. like that's fair enough yet. And I think Celtic are in a, a good position to respect Rangers, but just consent them, content themselves with what they're doing and what's happening with themselves and am, not worry am, about am I, it. Am I, am I allowed on this platform to say something positive about, you know, from the, the general spe- perspective of the health of Scottish football? about our closest rivals because one thing when I was listening to listening to um Clement talking last night I just thought well we Scotland have qualified for the European Championships it's the second time in a row we've done it we've done it with two games to spare and no matter what else you say about Scottish football it can it's attracted a a good solid European coach who's highly rated in the in the continent so that's yeah. that's that's not a bad that's not a bad thing for for us, but I'm I'll say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And speaking about thing things European, Celtic have been linked here we go that allegedly interested in Real Madrid goalkeeper Andre Lunin. He's a uh, Ukraine international uh, goalkeeper and but he's supposedly one of several shot stoppers. 
that Celtic scouting team are, are doing are, are watching and doing the analysis on. So uh, you know the, one of the papers has reported uh, that that Andrew Lennon is on a list of potential targets from from Real Madrid. Uh, tell me it's the inter- international break without telling me it's the international break, Kevin. You know <laughs> stories like that. You know, but, uh, and all- the last Real Madrid player we got, Tony. <laughs> Uh, who was that again? The the Mad Dane. Oh yes, yes, Thomas Gravison. Thomas yes, Gravison. Yes, indeed. I like Tommy Gravison. I, I did as well. He, he, he was my kind of player. To be fair, have, I, I think people have. I've, I've noticed in social media and some of the websites, Celtic websites, that there's been quite a harsh judgment of his time at Celtic. Um, but he gave us <laughs> he gave us some good memories. Well, he gives a hat trick against St. Mirren, a headed goal from three inches against Rangers, a cracking angled a volley against Rangers. Against Rangers yeah, yeah. He, scored, he scored the goal at Ibrox that put Celtic ahead with that angled volley. Was yeah. that the one for, um, the, for Neil, Neil 60 Lennon? 60 seconds later, Neil Lennon He's gets tripped to the box. In the Rangers yeah. box. And uh, a penalty that's wasn't the, awarded. I think that's probably the clearest penalty. I've never well, seen Kevin. That, that one and uh, Kanchelskis on Mahi. Oh yeah, when, uh, when Jim McCluskey Stewart and just pointed for a corner, mm. <laughs> he's like cleaned them out. Those two, uh, but again, we've moved on, haven't we? We've let it go, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but yeah, I, I remember. I remember listening to the news that that Celtic had signed Thomas Gravison, and literally, I'm thinking, of what is it, April the first? <laughs> no, because no. the last time I saw Tim. Thomas Gravison at that point was he was actually playing for Real Madrid. It's not as if he'd been, you know, he'd done something awful or he'd been rubbish for them. Yes, yeah. he, he was a functioning member of the Real Madrid first team squad. And we're we're signing him. Yeah, no, I love Thomas Gravison. I, I just wish we could have seen a lot more of him. And you know, I think he had his run-ins with Gordon Strachan, didn't he? But well, so did so did quite a few people. Like Aiden McGee was another. Yeah, but Celtic have been linked with. Uh, Say Andrew Lunin, the Ukrainian goalkeeper. I guess Celtic wouldn't be doing their due diligence, and the scouting team wouldn't be doing their homework if they weren't uh, targeting goalkeepers. Because obviously Joe Hart, uh, who's another one who polarises opinion amongst the Celtic supporters, but he can't go on forever. His contract's up soon as well, and uh, there's Scott Bain and Benjamin Seagrees there. But apart from Bain coming in when Joe Hart gets sent off. Neither of them seem to have really laid down that challenge to Joe Hart that you'd want. Another goalkeeper that's been linked is Kelleher from Liverpool as well. But is that a priority position for you, Kevin? Are you yeah. still hoping that Celtic, yeah? Yeah, I, I think the way the, the way football at the top level is played these days, that the everything starts from the goalkeeper. There is more expected of a goalkeeper now in the modern game uh, no matter how good a shot stopper he is, if he can't if he can't find a player with a pass under pressure, um, playing out from the back, then he's not going to make it at the top. Like, that's just now a given. Mm-hmm. He has he has to have ball skills and he has to have um, he has to have calmness under pressure. Uh, as as well as all the attributes that we traditionally associate with being a goalkeeper, I'm I'm a bit puzzled. I'm obviously missing something or something's going on that I don't know about. But I'm puzzled <laughs> about the 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 Bain and Seagrass situation because when when we signed Seagrass, everybody you know universal we thought that's a really good sign and that's a yeah. really good backup. And I think the the assumption there was that as as we phased Joe Hart out. Because yeah. of his age, that that Seagrist would was signed as a replacement, and we were happy about that because he was he was a good pro, Dundee United knows what he's about. He's played against us, played well against us, but something's obviously not happened. Yeah. Now, I don't know was 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 he injured, which which necessitated bringing <laughs> Scott Bain in. Um, so. I don't know. There's something. A secret is just not kick, kicked on the way you wanted them to and, and lay down that real challenge. Then, you know, just, have there been any games? Them, you know? 
No, I can't, I can't remember any games where he's come in and thought, well, he's he'll no do. He, um, he played in the early League Cup games under Ange, didn't he? I think he played in a 4-1 yeah. four, four, one, one over Ross County, I remember. And, I don't uh, remember anything calamitous. No, no, to be fair, I, I don't remember but anything. Then, but then Bain, Bain, unless I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Bain hasn't really let us down either over the last few years whenever he's been called in. I think a lot of people, that Hibs 4-2 game, Made a lot of judgment on him, didn't he? Yeah. Till yeah. in the last season when he had that record, say. Um, yeah. But, but goalkeepers. Yeah, if, if you're going to have going to that, aren't they? Yeah. If you're going to have that sort of game. That's the sort of game you want it to happen in. Yeah. Um, yeah the league was done and dusted at that point, wasn't it? He got us out of jail a couple of times at Ibrox over the yeah, last few years. I remember that one where Morelos missed and he grabbed oh. it on the line. Yeah. Uh, Bain, I thought, was very good that day, to be mm. fair. Handled that pressure uh, well. But, yeah, I I mean, it's, again, it's like everything else. You, you know there's an international break on and there's a dearth of things to talk about when you read that Celtic are linked with the, the Real Madrid, go- <laughs> <laughs> Madrid goalkeeper. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily uh, saying that it's not true. Mm. You could well be on a list of goalkeepers that they are keeping tabs on. Uh, that That's... You know, I, I, you just sort of say, okay, it's a a point of discussion whether it will happen or not. Like you, it will be one of those Thomas Gravison moments, won't it? You'd I'm still your, eyes, um, your ears in disbelief if you, you actually hear that. Uh, I, I'm still hopeful. That the sign. Big, I'm still hopeful that Big Ibrahimovic <laughs> will, will will pitch up at the have the, a only, song. the only club that he really genuinely loves. <laughs> 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 Because I'm sure, because he said that. Well, I keep telling everybody else that he said that, and over the years I've exaggerated it and said, you know, big man's always said a soft spot for the hoops, you know. <laughs> Boy, well, I think Henry Larson will have told him to of course, he finish, did. Off, finish he off his career there. And he, he seems to be going on forever, doesn't he, big Ibrahimovic? And yeah. He's not, he's not short of confidence, is he? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Like I, I Zlatan, you know, you know, like, and and he refused the offer to go to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, which puts me up in his estimation too. Any man that says my estimation. Any man that says, "What did you get your wife for your birthday?" and he says nothing because she's already got Zlatan. <laughs> you, know, you, you sort of think uh, you're not lacking in the, the confidence department, big guy. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, I, I guess uh, yeah, if you say you're allowed to dream, aren't you? About who you would love to see at Celtic Park. Indeed, he's one of them. All these players, that, all these players that claim to love us and claim to want to taste the unique Celtic Park atmosphere in European nights when they yeah. pitch up. I'm thinking, I'd love to get one of you. To, <laughs> I'd love to one of you to actually say, you know what? I've made my tens of millions of quid. I'm 34. I quite fancy playing in front of those amazing Celtic fans and wearing the hoops before yeah. that, just like Roy Keane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've all gone. You know, I had high hopes for Maldini at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hang a bit with you, Kevin. Now. There's, there's a dream I live in that the company Celtic. My fantasy, my Aye. fantasy land. <laughs> Get your brother on the case, you know. Yeah, and I think that's the thing about Andrew Loon and the goalkeeper. Eh? Lots of people are saying that he'd cost Celtic between, I think it's between twelve and fifteen million quid. And I just, I think like everyone else, you're a bit, you're a bit of a realist, Danny Boy, saying no chance of paying fifteen million for a goalkeeper. Eh? And it's not to say that the the money's not there, but just Celtic would be prudent, wouldn't they? And I just think that. Lashing out that huge expense on a goalkeeper, I don't know if they would be willing to do that. We don't, we don't, we don't have a crying need for it. Yeah, and you, at you, you've got to be sensitive when you're expressing an interest in a goalkeeper because if it's an outfield player, even even if it's a probing defender, midfielder, attacker, those who are currently at the club don't automatically think, well, he's coming from my place because he could be, you know. You could be covering several places, but when you, when a club expresses an interest for a goalkeeper, there's only one play, one player that he's 
he's there to replace. So you've got to you've got to manage that sensitively. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't think at the moment. But there have been other times in our history where we've had a crying need for a goalkeeper for various reasons. Yeah, that isn't happening now. This will probably be Joe Hart's last season, so we should be looking at it. Yeah, but again, I'd still like to know what the score is with with Seagrist. Yeah, Jerry Rock coming in. Kevin's one of the best in this podcast. There you go, Kevin. Yeah, that's You're right. a very kind man. Like, You're a very kind man <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go, shall I? Let you take over, Kevin. Just the close out, close out the last few minutes. <laughs> I think I think you might mean you know, you know generally, and he's got a short memory. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Sunday can't come quick enough for me, Kevin. I really can't. It's uh, you do miss your uh, your diet of club football, and I just feel that this international break has gone on forever, and it's, yeah. it's no any longer than any of the other international breaks. But it just seems to have dragged in for me. But there you go. It's just I don't see I don't see the sense when. The season gets up and running in August. We're not even in November, you know, and it's not just our season. You know, it's right across Europe, across the UK. Things were at that part of the season where things are beginning to take shape. We're just kind of we're, we're just loving having club football back, and already we've had two two week breaks. Yeah. So so you you try to market your product which is league football, cup football. Let's see how the new players are getting on. Who's going to be our challengers? Are we going to be relegation candidates? Are we going to be promotion candidates? This is when it begins to take shape. So what do we do? <laughs> Basically interrupt it at the, the time when it's the most intense. We've had two two-week breaks already, and we haven't even hit November. It's, it's, it's mental. Yeah, you know, I think, and I think there's another one in November, isn't there? That's it's deep. just, it's just nuts. It's just nuts. You know, you're building a bit of momentum. I, I think I heard somebody in Radio Five the other week talking about Pep Guardiola because they've lost two league games on the trot um, back to back. I think for only the, the third or fourth time since he's been at Man City, and the, the Radio Five commentator was saying. Pep is going to hate the fact that having lost two league games in a trot, he doesn't get any of his players. He can't work with any of his players to address what needs to be addressed yeah. for the next two weeks because they've been scattered. Some some will be playing in important games and others will be playing in, you know, ham and egg games, let's face it. Yeah. Cool. And I, I feel the same. I feel the same. It's like Hearts at Tyne Castle was one of the big games that we love, especially when it comes into winter, Tyne Castle and, you know, the dark nights thrown in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had some some towsy encounters there and we've been talking about it, waiting for it for two weeks. Yeah. I just, let's, it's what I've always said, let's just go back to parking the international games in midweek and not interrupting at all the, the league football. Yeah. Uh, domestic season, yeah. Too late was a cry here, Kevin. Oh, you're good too. <laughs> Jerry, 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 Pete McGee, one out of two ain't bad, Kevin. Don't be sad. Don't I'm, not, I'm not sad. I was <laughs> bigging up your man there. But James Floyd, he's my kind of guy. Tony Deman. Yes, Tony Deman. I don't know what I'm Deman for, but hey, I'll take it. Right, but there you go. Yeah, I'm like you. I, I think everybody just... You know, there are lots of people who are not uh, international football supporters. They, it, it's club football and that's it. They find it hard to get involved or interested in international football. And that's fair enough. I, I understand that. I'm quite a fervent Scotland fan. Delighted to see them qualify for Euro 2024. But after winning the first five qualifying games, there was spoke off here and I said there was an, an air of inevitability about that. But uh, you'd never get blasé about that. But you just kind of knew they would get the point required, mm. or Spain would beat Norway, and that's what what, what happened. But yeah, I mean, I, I I miss the club scene 
terribly. And when your life's immersed in your club and it's your mode of employment, then it, it kind of hits home a bit more. But I've just found this particular break to be to be long. And, and again, the one in November, I think most of the teams will have qualified. So you're saying now, the one in November, you're, you're, you're talking, could be talking a lot of dead rubbers in those international matches. No. Most of those qualification spots will have been filled, to my knowledge. Uh, and, you know, as you say, and then any chance you've got about, they're cramming in a lot of games up until the next one. And I'm, so, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that somebody at Celtic has a quiet word with Steve Clark. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know who, who, who we're meant to be playing in November. Do we, uh, are Scotland playing? I think they'll close out their... Uh, They'll close out their campaign. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping somebody has a, a quiet chat with Steve Clark, given how many games that <clears throat> Callum McGregor has played for Scotland. That's an intense part of the season for, for us anyway in a club. club yeah. For us. When you look at the... Yeah, next... maybe, you know, yeah. we'd appreciate it if um, if he was, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't go away with the squad, trains with him, but, you know, stick him in the bench and find a way of not putting him on the park, please. Yeah. Given what he's previously done for you. Georgia and Norway in November, but I'm looking at Celtic's next few games. Kevin and they've got Tyne Castle, Easter Road, a home game, and then they're going to Dingwall, mm. to, my, to my knowledge. I mean, that's quite a hectic period yeah. of games. Yeah. And as you see, you're, you're you're still Celtic are still trying to build momentum. They are seven points clear, get that, but they're trying to build that. And if they can come through that unscathed and, and have those 12 points, you, you are going that way, but then it'll be interrupted again with games that guys don't need to go. Callum McGregor, as you say, and Greg Taylor, I, I wouldn't want them to play in those games against yep. Georgia and Norway in November. They might want to, that's different. And and as you say, if they get called up, then they answer the call, and they all they always will, and they always do. But I just feel that you know, if you've qualified, then you know you, you've done the job that you set out to do. So give I other guys a hand, isn't it? You know, I saw I saw Steve Clark the other night saying the aim now is to finish top of the group. Yeah. But Spain, Spain, I think have got six or seven goals ahead of us. Um, and we're equal with them head to head. Yeah. So if it goes, to, if the next, if the next factor uh, is goals, is goals scored or goal difference, yeah, don't see it going. To, don't think it's going to happen. But but hey, the the subtext to all of that was roll on Sunday, basically. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, and Celtic got a. Tinka, so strange kickoff, Kevin, quarter past two. Yeah, don't know what that's all about. <laughs> see, if, see if I find, I know, can't be, if I, if I find it's anything to do with that Rugby World Cup, I'll be, I'll be seething. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another competition that's been going on forever as well. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I, I'll declare myself there, I've not been, I've not seen one minute of action. I saw it. I, I did see. I finally got round to seeing. Yeah, I saw. I saw two of the quarterfinals. Saw New Zealand play Ireland, which even to a rugby agnostic like me, it was breathtaking. Okay, it really it was. was. It really was breathtaking. But it's a nonsense World Cup anyway, because <laughs> like, I mean, you had cricket scores. You'd, yes, you'd countries playing that I didn't even know. <laughs> knew what a rugby ball looked like, and it and it told on the park, you know, one hundred and ninety seven <laughs> two or something. And you're thinking that's not a World Cup, you know. There's there's what there's like ten nations in the world that can play it, mm-hmm. ten or twelve, and they're trying to pretend there's actually thirty two. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, indeed. But anyway, that's all we're saying about rugby. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not qualified to talk about it. So I, would, I mean, well, I no, me neither. <laughs> me, me neither. But I would if you get, if you ever got the chance to see a the rerun of the. No, it was South Africa, France, wasn't it? South Africa, France. Yeah, South Africa, France. It was some mm-hmm. game. So was the Ireland game. Who were Ireland playing? Ireland were playing the Old Blacks. Yeah, yeah, New Zealand. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. I, I, I was aware of that. Aye. There you go. <laughs> anyway, there you go. 55 minutes. Yeah, can't be bad, eh? We await Sunday with bated breath. Can't wait for the uh, football fix again. Quarter past two, Tyne Castle. It'll be another one of those rip snorter of a games, Kevin. It always is at Tyne Castle. I love, I love, I love going to Tyne Castle. Uh, Celtic on the up, they produced their best performance of the season against Kilmarnock. You know, international players coming back, some of them coming back in confident mood. Mm. Callum McGregor having qualified for the, the Euros. Liam Scales having made his Republic of Ireland debut. Mikey Jones may be back with a spring in his step as well. But uh, they've all hopefully come back unscathed and uh, free from injury. We we'll await to see what happens with uh, tonight's matches, but oh, sorry, tomorrow night's matches. But yeah, I mean, it's all pointing to, you know, uh, you can look forward with confidence, can't you, with Celtic at this moment in time, Kevin? They're, they're coming to the boil and simmering away quite nicely, I think, under Brendan Rodgers. Well, given, given that in the first quarter of this, of the league season, we've played who are ar- arguably who will be in the top six. We've played them all away from home. Rangers, Aberdeen, Hearts. We're playing Hibs at Easter Road, aren't we? You follow me, yeah. Yeah. Um, Motherwell. So if we are, if we, if we win against uh, Hearts and Hibs, then we're looking at the second quarter where we've actually played what will be our hardest teams away from yeah. home. We've got that in a bang. We've got three three games left against Rangers, and we know two of them are at home. You know, that's that would be a good position to be in, a very, very good position to be in. Yeah, without a doubt. I agree with that. Excellent. <laughs> Pete McGee, what happened to the q and Tony? That's my question. Well, I, I await people throwing in questions in the comments. <laughs> we try and answer them, but... We were just enjoying the chat and the banter at all, and we were flicking up comments right, left, and centre. So uh, nobody came forward with questions that we really wanted to ask. Joe Curran, hi Kevin. Cal would not thank you if Steve Clark said, "Cal, I'm going to arrest you." There you go. No, he probably wouldn't. But that's a good point. You know, a lot. Cal McGregor loves playing for Scotland. Yeah. So, and he's a captain. He's our captain, so he has to. You know, if he, if he wants to play, well, you know, you can't, you can't really do it. It's just my preference. <laughs> I pay his wages. <laughs> <laughs> Seamus Gallagher, great show again, last. Thank you, Seamus. That's really, really kind. And as I said at the top of the broadcast, Celtic Way Morning Briefing now is a new sponsor, and it's MPH Group, as you can see, and they specialise in plumbing, heating, kitchen, and bathrooms, and the Celtic Way Morning Briefing is brought to you by the MPH Group and they are Scotland's award-winning family-run all-trade specialist covering all of mainland Scotland and every service you opt for automatically enters you into MPH's incredible holiday giveaway and you could win a seven-night stay at the luxurious five-star Moon Palace Resort in Cancun, Mexico. All the links and all the social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook handles are in the description of this video and the telephone number as well so log on and look at that but we thank MPH Group for their sponsorship of the Celtic Way Morning Briefing and as ever we say subscribe to the YouTube channel you get these videos for free but we also want you to subscribe to our channel the Celtic Way website and we help and we try and endeavour to provide top quality football journalism covering the club you love so hit that button guys www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe that's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe and we're currently doing a deal for four pounds for four months or why not take out a yearly subscription of 18 pounds all that remains for me to say is i always enjoy today's guest kev mckenna excellent stuff always Always my chat ah yeah indeed and he's very popular as the commenter said you know what i mean so there you go kev can't ask for more than that can you (laughs) Thank you for coming on, sir. Appreciate it. We oh, always yeah. do. Guys, thank you for the comments. Thank you for getting involved. We love it when you get involved. It makes the show go in 
a lot quicker as well. We hope you enjoy the the morning way briefings. Uh, we try and mix up the guests as well. But nice one. Take care. Have a terrific Tuesday. You know what I'm going to say. We'll see you tomorrow for a wonderful Wednesday. Cheers, lads, says Francis Green. Thank you, Francis. Appreciate that. Great show, boys, says Dennis Jameson. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.